In the stillness of the mountains of northern Philippines lie these man-made marvels. Created up to 2,000 years ago according to some scholars and then handed down for generations up to the present, they've been called a supreme national symbol of the Philippines. Built without forced labor or colonial help, Monuments to the spirit of a people who carved them out of these steep slopes a thousand meters above sea level. These are the rice terraces of the Philippine Cordilleras. Amongst UNESCO World Heritage Sites, they are special for being the first of their kind and one of only a few in the world designated as a cultural landscape a product of both nature and local culture. The people here have reworked nature to sustain themselves and in doing so transformed the landscape to one of unforgettable beauty. The rice terraces can be found spread out over 20,000 square kilometers in the mountainous Cordillera region of northern Luzon. Among the most famous of them is found here in Batad, Ifugao province. The Batad rice terraces form a colossal amphitheater that rises to dizzying heights. This breathtaking site is a world-famous wonder, but it exists mainly for its original humble purpose, to provide rice for the consumption of the locals. Unlike many ancient cultural heritage sites, the rice terraces are as alive and in use today as they have been for hundreds, even thousands of years. How and why did the people here, without the aid of modern technology, so dramatically transform this landscape into living, life-giving art? Rice has been cultivated in Asia for at least 4,000 years. The unique demand of rice to be grown in flooded paddies has made the rice paddy a common feature of Asian landscapes. The rice terraces of the Philippine Cordilleras, however, are anything but common. They are higher in altitude, planted between 700 and 1500 meters above sea level, and built on steep slopes with inclines of up to 70%. And yet, all labor in these fields, from building to planting to harvesting, is manual because the slopes are so steep that they can't use farm animals or mechanical equipment. Proof of how essential rice is to life here. The terraces exhibit not just beauty but also an astonishing level of sophistication in structural and hydrological engineering along with environmental and agricultural management. And all of this has been passed down by oral tradition from elders to the next generations. To know the terraces then is to know the Ifugao people. The Ifugao rice terraces uh, is what identifies us as a people. This is what keeps us as a people. This is what binds us as a people. It's actually one way of showing that we want to live, we want to struggle and we want to live with nature, we want to live with each other. The uniqueness of the terraces and the culture of the Ifugao naturally produces a uniquely hardy and delicious strain of rice that germinates under freezing conditions and grows chest high, unlike lowland rice that grows only knee high. As a result, the women harvest the rice not bent over as we usually see, but rather standing proud. This posture reinforces the tradition of singing the Ifugao harvest ritual chant known as the Hudhud. In 1999, it was declared by UNESCO as one of the 10 most significant intangible cultural heritage of the world. For all the importance of the rice terraces, they are in real danger of decay. Weather and time have taken their toll on many of the terraces and they are highly vulnerable to worsening storms. 
But perhaps of greater concern is the gradual disappearance of the traditional practices and beliefs that sustain the continuing use of the rice terraces. The intangible cultural heritage of the Ifugaos is the soul actually of the tangible. The tangible aspect will not be there without the intangible. We are going to the core of the matter, which is the lack already of interest. Next generation farmers lost their interest in maintaining the lifestyle. To me, even if we pour in investments for the repair of the rice terraces, the one question that we have to answer is who's going to stay behind and continue planting, maintaining the rice terraces. Many Fogao still believe in the importance of the rice terraces and the culture, but staying and making a living in the rice terraces, that's a big challenge. Given a choice, if you ask the younger generations of Ifugaos whether they'd like to stay in the rice terraces or not, I'm afraid most of them would opt for a life in the city or overseas. Being a farmer is not a derogatory kind of life. You know, being a farmer and taking care of your ancestral heritage is an honor, actually. It's a family honor. The enduring tradition of the Ifugao people is the soul of the rice terraces. How can the people chart a path into the future that balances tradition and progress? Finding an answer to this dilemma will determine whether these widely admired world wonders will become monuments from a bygone era or continue to be living landscapes for another thousand years and more. For generations, the rice terraces of the Philippine Cordilleras have stood as monumental symbols of the determination of a people who fashioned them out of the great mountains with little more than their bare hands. This is irreplaceable heritage, without equal in the world and a treasure for all mankind.